Al Ewing and Stefano Caselli unleash Uranus onto the Red Planet as the Eternal begins his mass genocide of Arako, with the Great Ring desperately trying to stop him before true damage can be done. Al Ewing showcases the utter destruction the Eternals unleashed on Arako with Uranus this issue in glorious fashion, using a fantastic ticking clock mechanic to help hit home just how much of an absolute threat Uranus is and what his armories can achieve. I loved the utter futile nature of the issue, with the mutants literally throwing their own bodies and people at Uranus to no avail, and if all of that wasn't enough to sell just how much of a threat of an Eternal he is, Al Ewing had him speedrun David Haller in 30 seconds, which just on its own is a big feat and should sell just how big of a threat he is. I also really like that they did this sort of stuff to catch people up on who Uranus is as a person. If people didn't read Kieran Gillen's Eternals run, or at least the one shot featuring Uranus and what he has done, people can kind of get a sense of what he is throughout this issue since it's exactly the same as he was in those issues and he's just this unyielding force of nature that will stop at nothing until his protocols have been fulfilled. One of the big things that I'm very surprised to have been included in this issue and something I'm hoping to see a little bit more progress throughout these issues and Judgment Day is how Magneto ends up being killed but is then alive at the end of the issue since just in the last issue of X-Men Red it's revealed that he and Storm destroyed their backups so they could live on Arako more naturally like an Arakai would with no backups and no resurrection protocols in place. So with Magneto somehow being back alive at the end of the issue is really strange and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how exactly he is surviving now. Since I imagine there will be some big reasoning why since he had some sort of glowing thing in his chest but very much looking forward to seeing how Al Ewing spins this especially after he destroyed his backup so will this book end with him dying actually or will they somehow manage to bring him back alive either way very interested to find out Stefano Caselli depicts Uranus's utter domination of the mutants with fantastic pace and a great urgency to the action. I love the ticking clock mechanic being visualised on the pages as words from the machine as it ticks down time before Uranus is teleported out. Caselli's art also was visceral in all the right ways, showcasing the odd brutal act of Uranus but I loved how they kept him very much a sort of static imposing tall figure who would just kind of march towards the mutants with very small flurries of violence here and there and then him just going back to like this just unmoving wall of force. X-Men Red Issue 5 was a fantastically scary, action-filled issue that sold Uranus's imposing figure and power super well, pitting the mutants' unstoppable forces against a literal immovable object which leads to some really surprising developments for a certain magnetic mutant. I'm gonna give this issue a 10 out of 10. X-Men Red Issue 5 finds Abigail Brand warn the Great Ring of the oncoming war with the Eternals and how they'll try and kill all of mutant kind very soon, maybe even later that day. No one responds to her as Aura Serata says that the Omega Seer idol can see the true future but she can't change it and even before Tarn stole her tongue all they could do was interpret these sayings from her. The eye delivers a rather cryptic message about a stalemate as Iska knows that Storm usually stopped those, asking where she is. Magneto says that she is with the Quiet Council giving them the Arakai perspective and Nightcrawler is there to give them the Krakoan view. Iska thinks that it is a time for a war council as Cable wishes to talk about strategy and how to deal with the Eternals, knowing while Krakoa will have a psychic battle on their hands, the physical battle will be there with them, expecting an overwhelming force. Suddenly there is a bright light in the sky as Magneto tells Iska to be ready since she will act first against the enemy. Iska however has already killed Idol, revealing that she has swapped sides after finding out the mutants cannot win this battle. Kurt knows they need to take her off the board, grabbing her and teleporting her away as something big hits the council room. Uranus appears, telling the mutants that he has come to correct them. As Uranus arrives, so do his armories, which arrive above Port Prometheus and various other places all around the planet, utterly decimating the mutant population. As six minutes after Uranus's arrival, the mutants attack the being, but nothing phases the Eternal, who kills Aura Serata with one blow, telling the being that there is no law, but principles coded into him, and all non-Eternal life must die. David Haller soon confronts Uranus, who finds the Legion quite interesting. 
so he takes the fight outside, not wanting to break the furniture. With a moment to gather themselves, Abigail Brand tells the mutants that she has lost Sword Station 2, and she can assume from no communication from the Keep that that has gone down as well. The Council know of the attacks around the planet, knowing as the seeds of day they have a responsibility to the world. 30 seconds later, Uranus returns, signalling that Legion is dead. Magneto calls for Lotus to give him metal, which he throws at Uranus, wrapping him in it as across the planet, the mutants and even Nova try and hold off Uranus' armies. Iska, after having dealt with Nightcrawler, battles a monster in the ocean, as the mutants all fall, while Uranus finds Magneto's powers quite impressive, noting how this battle seems to be quite personal for him in some way, apologising to him for that as he bursts out of Max's grip. Rip, plunging his arm into the mutant's chest and ripping his heart out as Cable calls in the Omega-1 Pulse Rifle, the most dangerous gun in his arsenal that fires bullets of ultra-dense solar light that can melt even osmium. And in the year 3877 when it was developed, it is considered a weapon of absolute destruction and was absolutely banned. Cable fires at Uranus for a solid three and a half minutes, but all it does is slightly weaken the Eternal, and with his own weapon he burns off Cable's face and kills him. More mutants die in the keep above and over in the Morrowlands as Zillow tries to restrain Uranus with its sharp, bone-flaying tentacles, but all they do is disgust Uranus, who rips the being apart. Nova meanwhile manages to partially evacuate Port Prometheus as the armies continue to come, and soon two minutes pass, and after only 20 full minutes on the planet, Uranus has wiped out almost all of the mutants, with 40 minutes of his hour left. With the remaining 40 minutes, Uranus assembles their bones in a giant 50 mile wide X shape, leaving satisfied with his work and confident in his ability to bring death. Zillow, however, is still alive, using his tentacles to retrieve Lotus, who he hid in the pile of gore. Lotus wants revenge on Uranus as he spots Aura in a pile. Lotus and Zillow find that Aura's body is still untouched and will require healing, but they must strategize against Uranus's roaming weapons. A voice tells him that strategies aren't a matter for the table dusk, and this is a war they are losing. The voice is revealed to be a somehow alive Magneto, who says that the seat of loss will take command now. Mm -hmm.